Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for Alta News Craft Your Life Project Kit for the month of April. Rustic Charm is a gorgeous garden themed kit. I couldn't resist making several cards with these wonderful products and you'll be able to see those on my blog in the upcoming days at bonniecarolee.com. The Rustic Charm stamp set has some beautiful images and lots of sentiments. For this card, I'll be focusing on one of the birds and the two leafy branches. Using the stamp wheel, the images will be inked up with Altenew's permanent black ink and stamped on white cardstock. I just recently ordered the stamp wheel, so this platform is pretty new to me. So right off the get-go, I noticed that the insert was tacky and holds your cardstock securely in place. This really does give peace of mind when you're re-stamping an image. No worries about anything being misaligned. Leafy Branch is going to be stamped four times, so I'm going to remove the bird from the platform, and I can just turn my platform to the other side. I do not have to reposition my stamps, and I can go ahead and stamp the images again. Even though this is my first time using the stamp wheel, I'm starting to see the possibilities. I'm going to be doing some quick and easy coloring using the stencil set that comes with this kit. A step-by-step -step illustrated guide outlines the sections and the order in which they are to be colored for each of the images. The references are etched directly on the stencils and in addition to that in the stamp set each of the images is letter referencing them back to the stencil set. The stamp set includes two branches and two birds that are the mirror image of one another. For this card, just one of the birds was stamped, but I did stamp both of the branches two times each. The two branches that are oriented the same will be stenciled first. All of the coloring will be done with Alta News dye inks. For this first section, I'll be using a combination of paper bag and dark chocolate. The inks are being applied with Altenew's new micro blending brushes. This set comes with four brushes in two different sizes. The brush end is very soft and dense and the inks go on beautifully. The same stencils are used for the branches that are oriented in the other direction. The stencil is cleaned up with a baby wipe and I dry it with some paper towel. The stencil is flipped over to the other side and now can be aligned to the branch on the other two images. And they are colored in the very same inks and in the same manner as the first two. There are four different layering sections to color the branches. For the second layering section, I'll be working with a couple of pretty greens, a dark green called evergreen, which will be placed at the base of the leaves and then the leaf will be finished off with a lighter green called frayed leaf. And to apply that dark ink tightly to the base of the leaf, I'm working with the smallest of the two sizes of micro blending brushes. And I'll continue with the same process, first stenciling the other branch that is oriented in the same direction as this one, and then cleaning the stencil off, flipping it over, and doing the other two branches. The third section of the stencil will color in the remaining leaves. I'll continue with evergreen, that dark green, at the base of all of the leaves, but I'll switch up the second green to a different tone called forest glades. Like stencil section two, I use the smallest of the micro blending brushes for the base of the leaf and then switch over to the larger size to apply the frayed leaf. For all of the leaves, when applying that lighter tone of green, it is overlapped with the dark one so that it has a nice smooth gradient. The fourth and final layering section to complete the branches will color in the berries. I'm working with a combination of caramel toffee, which I'm applying now, and I'm just catching one side of the berry, and then I'll finish the berries off with a coat of Peach Perfect. And just like the other three sections, I clean my stencil off when I've done two branches oriented in the same direction, flip my stencil over, and then I can go ahead and color the berries on the other two. 
The coloring is so quick and easy. These branches are done in no time at all and they have such a beautiful result. And now on to that sweet bird, which has something in common with the branches. As I mentioned earlier, in the stamp set, there are two branches. One is a flip image of the other, and same with the bird. Two images, and if I had stamped the second image of the bird, I would use the flip side of the stencil to color that one. For the first layering section, I'm applying a combination of buttercream and peach perfect. Typically for each of the stencil layers, I like to apply more than one color. I just think it adds more depth. For the second layer, I'll be using a combination of paper bag and caramel toffee. Because the ink tones are in the same family, I don't bother changing my blending brush. When I switch to the second color, I just give the brush a good wipe on some paper towel first. The third layering section is going to color the top of the bird's head and add some pretty details onto the wings. I'll be using Peach Perfect. The fourth layer will add some color to the bird's breast and the top of the wing. Both areas are first colored with buttercream. Then switch over to a deeper yellow called Warm Sunshine and place it on the underside of the breast and at the top of the wing. Sixth layer will finish off the wing and also do the right hand side of the bird's mask. The seventh section will complete the mask on the left hand side of the bird's head. This stencil layer and the previous one was done with dark chocolate. The final layer is done with permanent black to color in the beak and the claws. Look at the coloring detail. It is absolutely amazing. The coordinating dies included in the kit were used to cut all four branches and the bird. The plan is, is to nestle that bird in a tree thick with branches. The design was laid out so that I could position the sentiment and then I used a product called Press and Seal to pick everything up. I ended up making quite a few adjustments, but at least it gave me an idea of where to place the sentiment. Working on a panel of very dark green cardstock that measures four inches by five and a quarter inches, the sentiment is stamped with Versamark ink. It is coated with gold embossing powder and then melted with the heat tool. So this is what initiated the change in the layout. It was that gold embossing on that dark green cardstock. It looks so rich that I decided that I would take the die for the branches and cut matte gold cardstock. The branches will be offset on them, leaving a thin line of gold to highlight them. I love lots of dimension on my cards, and so I set to work backing all of the branches with little black foam squares. The branches were then arranged on the panel so that the sentiment would be tucked into that leafy scape. The overhanging die cuts were trimmed off. I like to use large shears to do this. To get a nice flush cut, I flip the panel to the back side and push the blade right up against the panel's edge. The fourth branch was cut into two sections. They are put in place to fill in the bottom of the card, and I'll trim off the excess like before, but this time I'm going to hang on to these pieces. They're a little bit larger and they will be perfect for filling in here and there so that I have a nice full treescape. The third branch down from the top was positioned so that the bird would be able to sit on it. You can see that that branch has more of a horizontal layout. Foam squares are added to the back of the bird and then it's popped into position. Card front is adhered to matte gold cardstock that measures four and one eighth inches by five and three eighths inches. The thin gold edging around the panel picks up on the gold highlights on the branches. And to really make that gold pop, it goes on to a black A2 sized card base. And the card is finished up with matte gold pearls placed pretty much everywhere. And that wraps up this card featuring Altenew's Craft Your Life project kit for the month of April.
Rustic Charm is gorgeous and has so many possibilities. Included on the post for this card at bonniecarolee.com, there is a second card which I've provided step-by-step -step instructions. It has a completely different look. I have several other card examples that I'll be sharing in the days ahead, so stay tuned. Thank you for visiting, and as always, I appreciate your visit.